In this video, I'm going to explain how you would choose between Azure AI Studio and Copilot Studio when you're creating custom copilots and why that might not even be a question you should be asking yourself. So before we get started, let's just work together to make sure that we get to some common terms that Microsoft uses. One is Copilot. So a Copilot is basically a conversational app that uses uh, generative AI technology in order to be able to complete its capabilities. When we get into generative AI in itself, generative AI is basically this uh, implementation that allows you to be able to produce human-like content uh, back from different pieces of input, like a, a piece of text or images or generate code and all of that. So it's all unique in the way that it's created, but it's created out of a model that is being able to generate that like a human would. Now that's where we go to LLM. And LLM stands for Large Language Model. And this is what a lot of people are you know, going on about when we start talking about AI models or conversational AI or generative AI or open AI and things of that nature. And there are a lot of different large language models out. Most people are very familiar with like the GPT models like 3.0 or 3.5 Turbo or 4. Uh, these are all just versions of large language models that are available to help people understand how to generate a response, you just think of it that this is the thing that makes it where it can read something and understand it, and it can also generate a response because it understands what you're saying, it understands the content, so it can generate a response back to you. So in general, you used to train language models. These are pre-trained language models that you can use that are trained over tons of information in the, in the internet. So let's move on to RAG. Um, so it stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation. Most everyone doesn't understand what that means, so I'll explain it in layman's terms. In layman's terms, it's basically nothing more than searching over unstructured content like files or websites and things like that, using which are commonly indexed and searchable. But then imagine I take the search results and I run it through with the context of what you're talking about the context of the content, and then being able to generate a response using that particular uh, piece of content to be able to answer the question. So a lot of people know this as like ChatGPT does this, and there's also the Copilot from Microsoft that does this, and they're primarily using the knowledge within the model itself and also some sort of knowledge that's on the internet. Uh, but that's what a RAG pattern is. Then you go into GPTs, which stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformers. In a sense, this is basically think of it as a combination of you being able to just use the model knowledge that is available and also being able to give it some explanation on how you want it to behave. And then also maybe even give it some additional content that you might want to provide it. It's a, think of it as a very simple uh, co-pilot that you can implement pretty quickly because it's just a matter of giving it knowledge and some base instructions. Then we get into plugins. This is the overloaded term that's starting to happen now, just like co-pilot was overloaded. Now plugin. In a sense, just think of a plugin as a pluggable component that will be used in all of these different uh, solutions that you might run into. So just be aware of that as we're talking about all these different plugins. There's all kinds of different types of plugins and things like conversational plugins or things that plug in so that you can access APIs. That's basically what a, a conversational component is going to be, it will be sort of a plugin. And then we have connectors and there's all these different connectors, you'll hear us talking about this. These are just basically ways to connect to external data sources for different needs. And if you want to connect it to the graph, you'll use a Microsoft Graph connector. If you want to use a Power Platform connector, it's just a basically a wrapper around an API to be able to let you connect to it. Now let's get into what everybody's here to talk about, right? Which is why would you, when you're wanting to build your own custom Copilot, why would you use Azure AI Studio or why would you use Copilot Studio and what's the difference? And the reality is it's actually not that complicated. I think a lot of people make this more complicated than it needs to be. So let's 
first go back to what we explained what a copilot is, which is basically a conversational application that uses generative AI. So when we're talking about Azure AI Studio, so we'll start on the far right over here. Azure AI Studio is all about being able to take large language models and modify them and make them your own. And so being able to do that and being in full control of that, um, of that AI model is sort of the key of what it does. It makes it easy for you to be able to do that. So if your copilot is nothing but generative AI and all it is is what's in a model and just a single model, then in that case, you can use Azure AI Studio to build your copilot. But a lot of people need what we call conversational orchestration. And I'll get into more details into conversational orchestration, but in general, think of it that I might want to say that there are two different models and based upon uh, which property you're staying in in a hotel, I might send you to model A versus model B or depending on the geolocation or something within the conversational context, I might shift it based upon what's going on in the conversation, but I also may not want everything to be generated. So let's take a look at what that means. So conversational orchestration or dialogue management is probably the most underrated concept that people don't understand in the conversational space. It's where you as the author of the copilot can really get and control everything. So it means that I can say, I understood what you said, but I just want to answer, I don't know, or all the way to, I understood what you said, and I'm going to provide like a custom authored experience for that. Or maybe I want to release it to a generative AI component to be able to go take care of you and service you to fill in the gaps because it's not worth my time to author it to that level. But then there's also escalation management, which is I don't know what you said or you see that you're stuck in a churn and I want to be able to help you. And so maybe I want to escalate you to a live agent. But there's also the fact that there's an entire variable management system so that you can provide context into the conversation and be able to interact uh, with things. So not everything is just generative. And it might have multiple generative AI models that I might want to orchestrate to for different purposes. Say that I want to generate a answer to a proposal. I might have a Azure AI model that I've created that's built specifically for that, but I might want to handle answering questions over SharePoint knowledge in a completely different way. This is the concept of conversational orchestration, and I have a video in my channel that goes into this in more depth, and I would encourage you to make sure that you watch that one because this is the core concept that people forget. So you might ask yourself, why is everyone so confused about these two different things? And it really comes back to the RAG pattern. And the RAG pattern is the conversation we had earlier about the way that you can search and summarize over unstructured content. And unfortunately, because of the fact that people are so familiar with ChatGPT, they think of a RAG pattern as what generative AI is and as what a copilot is. But a copilot can be much more than that. Know that generative answers inside of Copilot Studio is a SaaS based implementation of a RAG pattern. So it means that you don't have to do all of these seven different steps and build this from scratch. You can actually just use a out of the box pre-configured implementation of this. And when you try to equate Copilot Studio to just being a RAG pattern or just being generative answers, this is where you'll see some overlap with Azure AI Studio. But what you should be aware of is Azure AI Studio implementation is included as part of this SaaS based RAG pattern, as you can see in the summarization section over here in step four. So if you were going to build your own custom RAG pattern, you don't have to use the generative answers implementation, but many customers do because they want to have a solution that just out of the box is already pre-configured for them and they don't need to have a whole bunch of data scientists involved uh, to be able to make their RAG pattern safe. Again, many times you will use Azure AI Studio even for RAG patterns because you might have something special that you want to do. But the idea is that 80% of customers can use a commodity SaaS based RAG pattern like generative answers. So just to summarize what we went over, 
When you're building custom copilots, you really need to determine is everything that you're going to do just generative and just within a single model, or are you going to need conversational orchestration? Most people will need conversational orchestration, and a lot of people will also need custom models uh, that are implemented in Azure AI Studio. So the real question is, what are my requirements, and should I need one or the other or both? And most common answer, both. I hope this video was helpful to get you to understand the difference between these two different uh, components from Microsoft. You can always go and try Copilot Studio at aka.ms slash try Copilot Studio. And please feel free to like and subscribe to my channel for additional video and content like this.